the Tudor period was a very brutal time to have lived in. During the reign of Henry VIII, the king executed around 70,000 people inside of his kingdom, and some of his closest friends, including Thomas Cromwell and Sir Thomas More, went to their executions on Tower Hill. But his daughter Mary, who later became known as Bloody Mary I, continued the killing inside of the kingdom, following the death of her half-brother, Edward VI. To punish heretics who she deemed were damaging England with their Protestant ideas, she burned hundreds of people at the stake inside of the lands she oversaw. Many believe that the Queen sent people to be burned due to the fact she believed God was punishing her for allowing heretics inside of England. But there was one high-up member of the church, who was a bishop of Worcester and Gloucester, who was executed in brutal fashion. Today Bishop John Hooper is a forgotten man executed by Bloody Mary. Join us today as we look at his execution, and remember to support our channel, please make sure to subscribe. Bishop John Hooper was born around 1495, and little is known about his early life, except the fact he became a priest. In 1538, his name appeared as a man who surrendered his house to the king, and with this he was considered a monk, who during the dissolutions of the monasteries, handed over his priory to Henry VIII. He was not accused of being in breach of his monk's vows, but following this, he then became employed in the household of the Earl of Arundel. In this, he believed he was serving very much as a courtier, and may have been involved in the king's royal court. Hooper, however, left England in 1544, and went to Strasbourg two years later. He moved to Zurich, but returned to England to claim his inheritance, but was imprisoned twice. He sought shelter on the continent, but in May 1549 he returned to England yet again. When he came back, he became a key preacher of Swiss Calvinism against Lutherans and Catholics, and became the personal chaplain of one of the most senior figures in the country. He became a personal priest to Edward Seymour, the first Duke of Somerset, the Lord Protector, who was overseeing Edward VI Regency Council, and Seymour was practically ruling England as king, whilst Edward was too young but Hooper's master would fall from grace. Edward Seymour was accused of betraying England and treason, and following his fall from grace, Hooper's position was also dangerous. He had previously spoken out against other key bishops, such as Bishop Gardner and Bonner, who wanted to dig their claws in. But John Hooper then became John Dudley, the Earl of Warwick's personal chaplain, who continued the Protestant reforms, began by Seymour. John Hooper was then offered to become the Bishop of Gloucester, and in this role Hooper spoke out against oaths taken by saints, and he refused to be consecrated initially. Other archbishops such as Thomas Cranmer and Bishop Nicholas Ridley told him to fall into line, and he was even imprisoned for being obstinate in his beliefs, and he was actually imprisoned by the king. He was held for a number of weeks in Fleet Prison, however Hooper then agreed to be finally consecrated, and this took place on the 8th of March 1551. John Hooper did not think too much of bishops in the church, and he looked at the public in his diocese, and he believed most of them did not know anything about the church. Most of the clergy could not repeat the Ten Commandments, and many priests he was overseeing had no clue about the Bible, and in particular parts of the scriptures. Hooper then said that his priests and clergy were to teach the parishioners the Ten Commandments, the Creed and the Lord's Prayer, word for word, as they were written and that every parson teach the Ten Commandments out of the twelfth chapter of Exodus, as they stand there, and no otherwise not taking one word, letter or syllable from them. He ensured those bishops and priests under his control were doing their job and spreading the word of God exactly how it was written in the Bible. This was impressive, and standards did increase, but then a year later he was also made the Bishop of Worcester as well. As a bishop he believed they should be in poverty and adhere to a simple life, and he gave any profits from Gloucester to the king. Hooper also was a fair man, and he spoke out about problems with society at the time, including issues with finances and money that were plaguing England. There was a large rise in the price of essential goods, and he said that, for all things here be so dear that the most part of people lack, their little livings and poor cottages decay daily. But following the death of King Edward VI, there was a huge change in England coming. John Dudley tried to instil his daughter-in-law, Lady Jane Grey, as a Queen of England, and he did manage to do this. Jane was instilled as a Queen, and her husband, Guilford Dudley, wanted so much to become King. 
the hope of Jane as Queen was that strong Protestant reforms would continue under a strongly Protestant monarch. But Lady Jane Grey was soon overthrown by Princess Mary, the eldest daughter of Henry VIII. But as soon as Mary I came onto the throne, she made huge changes to religion, declaring that Catholicism was the religion of the nation once again, and she reverted all the changes that had gone before in the decades before with regards to religion. She returned the country back to more traditional methods of worship, but this meant that large amounts of Protestant officials and powerful Protestant figures were caught in the crossfire. They had reformed the church and Mary deemed them to be heretics who needed to pay. John Hooper had initially opposed the plan to put Lady Jane on the throne, but Mary I did not take any pity on him. He was seen as a very radical Protestant and was hated by the Queen. Because of this he was the first bishop attacked by the Queen, and he was sent back to Fleet Prison on the 1st of September 1553. He was held initially on a charge of unpaid debts, but as the changes to the church were reverted, Hooper lost his title of a bishop and his lands, and as he was a married man, this was seen as unlawful in the Queen's eyes. He was held in prison, and following the return of the Heresy Acts, he was condemned to die by Bishop Gardner. He was to be burned at the stake, and was degraded with his hands being scraped by knives by Bishop Bonner. It was said of his execution that, about eight o'clock on February the 9th, 1555, he was led forth, and many thousands of people were collected, as it was market day. All the way being straightly charged not to speak, and beholding the people, who mourned bitterly for him, he would sometimes lift his eyes up towards heaven, and look very cheerfully upon such as he knew. He was attached to the stake before the fire was lit, and it was said, Command was now given that the fire should be kindled. It kindled not speedily, and was a pretty while before it took the reeds. At length it burned about him, but the wind having full strength at that place, and being a lowering cold morning, it blew the flame from him, so that he was a man a little more touched by the fire. A new fire was then made, and those burned at the never parts, but had small power above because of the wind, saving that it burnt his hair and scorched his skin a little. In the time of which fire, even as as the first flame, he prayed, saying mildly, and not very loud, but as one without pain, O Jesus, son of David, have mercy upon me, and receive my soul. After the second fire was spent, he wiped both his eyes with his hands, and beholding the people, he said with an indifferent loud voice, For God's love, good people, let me have more fire. And all this, while his never parts did burn. But the wood was so few, that the flame only singed his upper parts. The third fire was kindled within a while after, which was more extreme than the other two. In this fire he prayed with a loud voice, Lord Jesus have mercy upon me, Lord Jesus receive my spirit. And these were the last words he was heard to utter. But when he was black in the mouth, and his tongue so swollen, he could not speak, yet his lips went until they shrunk to the gums, and he knocked his breast with his hands, until one of his arms fell off, then knocked still with the other, while the fat water and blood dropped out at his fingers, ends, until renewing the fire, his strength was gone, and his hand clay fast in knocking to the iron upon his breast. Then immediately bowing forward, he yielded up his spirit, this was he three quarters of an hour or more in the fire. So Bishop John Hooper's execution was incredibly painful. He was burned at the stake and three fires were needed to take his life, and it took around 45 minutes for him to die. His execution showed the brutality of Mary the First reign. Thanks for watching. To support our channel, please make sure to subscribe, and once again, thank you so much for watching.